Okay, so what I really wanted to go over was when God created Adam. I wanted to go deep into the Hebrew of what it meant by he made him in the likeness and image and gave him dominion over the earth. But it's, keep it real, saints, we, we just can't go deep with it. We, it's better we go to the more meaty side of the message. Amen? But man in Hebrew is ish. If you could write it down quick, write it down. But, huh? You want to know something amazing? Do I have a name for this? This was my traffic message. The traffic message. Write that down. <laughs> Write it down. Stuck in traffic, moving in the spirit. Y'all ready? So man means ish, but the interesting thing is it's plural. This means when God's seen Adam, I need y'all to see this from a supernatural point of view. When God seen Adam, he seen all of creation. He said, this is man, but he was speaking of mankind. Are y'all following? So yes, he called Adam man, but he was speaking for the entire human race. That's amazing. You want to talk about a God that sees into the future, amen? I mean, literally, he's seen all of us in this room while seeing a a God is outside of time and space. Remember that. He can go into time and space, but he's outside of time and space. So when he looked at Adam, he seen me, he seen you, he seen you, he seen you, he seen you in Adam. But the good news is, is when God the Father looked into his son, he seen me, he seen you, he seen, oh, nah, nah, we, we ain't going there. Hallelujah. Image, write this down. Characteristics, qualities, resemblance. Write those three words down. We're going to save time. She's such a blessing, man. Blessed baby, man. So, characteristics, qualities, resemblance. Y'all got it written down? Number two, likeness. Because remember, Adam was made in the image and the what? Likeness. The likeness of God. To function like, shape, model. Write those three words down. But we're going to focus on to function like. Yeah. So we went over image, which is characteristics, qualities, and resemblance. The likeness is to function like God. You see the difference. And then there's dominion. To rule, to govern, to master, manage. I went too fast, I know, sorry. Say it again. To rule, govern, master, manage, to have authority on the earth. Okay? Then I wanted to get into how he was made from the dust. We might do that. Then I wanted to get into the breath that was put into him and how he became a living soul. But that might take me on another journey, brothers and sisters, and I honestly don't want to do that, okay? I got to be led of the spirit, and, and it is what it is. But I, I don't regret not, not one bit that we had to take extra time with this many people to do a longer deliverance prayer, to do more, love you, brother, to do more praise and worship, right? Because look, a lot of people go to conferences and all they get is some form of a deliverance. That's it. And they go home. $200 more broke. Because that's how much it costs to get in there. But the reality is, God is feeding us right now. So it's wiser that we kind of eat and go on the road. How many of y'all ever ate while you drove before? Don't lie. How many of y'all are good at it? Don't lie. I always get a tomato on my lap. Just, oh. Let me get a plain cheeseburger, please. I'm just terrible at driving and eating. You know what I'm saying? You ever had the mayonnaise drop out? You like... I'm just <laughs> trying to make y'all laugh. Little laugh is good. You know God laughs, don't he? Yeah, he does. I don't know if he likes mayonnaise, but I know he laughs. Characteristics, qualities, resemblance, and to function like. To rule, to govern, 
to manage, to lead, to have authority. This is what it meant when Adam was created. So I started to think about this. They'll go real quick. You know what they'll say to you? When it talked about man being made in the image of God, there's no way to mean like the look of God though. They'll say there's no way because God is spirit. How do you look like a spirit? But I'm like, wait a minute. What y'all need to stop doing all the time is only learning from men. That's a problem. You see, the Bible doesn't say not to learn from men. Because you, you get some, like, people that are not called to be teachers. And they'll be like, well, the Bible says you need no man to teach you. But that's not what it's saying. They're taking that scripture out of context. What the Bible is saying is that the Holy Ghost needs to be your number one teacher. Man, man comes second. Right? Now, don't get it twisted. The same Holy Ghost teaching you privately will teach you greatly through a person. Because it's still him. You follow me? But I'm thinking about this and I'm like, but wait a minute though. The word of God doesn't contradict itself. Huh? It doesn't contradict itself. So what the Bible says in John, that no man have seen God at any time, and they use that as the reason to talk about, well, when Adam was made in the image of God, it doesn't mean like God looks like us. He's a spirit. Well, I don't know about that one, brother. We're going to have to talk about this. I started to think. And this hit me. I, I was talking to my fam. I was talking to some of the growing leaders, which is fam in Christ. I kind of gave him a little teaser, though. You know what I mean? So I went on a journey. I wanted to know. What does God Almighty look like? Right? Think about it. What does the Almighty look like? Y'all don't mind it. Y'all got... Can I sit, please? Y'all comfortable? You know what I mean? But think about this. If God is spirit, no man has seen God at any time. But does the Bible actually teach that, though? Because the last time I checked, God has gone to people face to face. Yes or no? Was not the man of God able to see the back of God? Huh? We're going to get into that, but y'all ready to have some fun? I got to do it at least once. Look at your neighbor. And say, neighbor! You ready to have some fun? I ain't gonna lie, I like that. <laughs> At least I didn't tell you to slap your neighbor like some of these cats be doing. What's up, brother? People have seen God, and they've seen like Christ, of course. Well, what does it mean when it says no man has seen God? We about to get into it. My brother, he don't want to wait. He's like, just tell me, bro. He tried to have like a private study. Like, just hide the mic, just tell me. I, forget everyone else. I love you, brother. You're a blessed man, brother. You're a blessed man. Y'all ready to have fun? Y'all yeah. ready to have fun? Yeah. I found out that God has breath. God breathes. Okay, that don't excite you. It excites me. And ain't nobody got better breath than the Almighty. Can I get an amen? Yeah. So God breathes. I want you to, we got to go to the scriptures on this one though. Go to Isaiah. We got to be quick though. You know the rule. Isaiah 11 verse 4. If you get there, you get there. Hey, hey y'all over to the right, how y'all doing over there? Y'all got stuck in the corner of children. You just like, what'd you say, man of God? Just... I'm, I'm in daycare right now. <laughs> Plenty of seats over here, you can move, you know what I mean? We can't knock the children. Hey, shout out to the children. <laughs> Amen. We love y'all. May the Lord bless all the children. And of course, bless those that are helping and watching over the children. Oh, by the way, some of them coloring books, we try so hard. We try to look for Christian stores. If there's any graven images, make sure y'all rip them out and throw them away. Any other image other than like a Jesus, make sure you take that out, throw it away. 
Okay, we try to look for Old Testament ones, but just in case they slip one up in there, you see a blonde haired guy just whoop, rip that right out and uh, <laughs> apologize to little Susie. She'll understand. Now, y'all ready? Isaiah 11, let's see what it says. Let's see what it says. I'm excited. But with righteousness, verse 4, shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Oh, that's so good. God breathes in and out. I can't, Lord, I can't. I'm going to have to wait, Lord. I'm going to have to wait. I'm going to have to wait. Go to Job 15, quick. Who's going to get there? Job 15. I'm right there, though. I can't lie. Matter of fact, I'm there. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Verse 30. I'm reading it. No, I wasn't. Next page. He shall not depart out of the darkness. The flame shall dry up his branches. And by the breath of his mouth shall he go away. Now, all right, what we're going to do is for most of these, I had a plan where I had like 10 scriptures for each body part. Can we, can we be fair? One verse for each body part. Is that fair enough? If it said he got a nose, we don't need 30 verses to confirm it. Is that a deal? Amen. So does God breathe? Does God have a head? Yes. First Corinthians 11.3, write it down. The head of Christ is who? Christ. That's right. See, we can get through this pretty quick. Does God have an amazing face? Does he have a face is my question. 11, verse 3. Exodus 33, 20, write it down. I'll give the others when I, when I record this, uh, when I put it up, okay? I'll give you the other verses. Is that fair? But go to Exodus 33. Let's go. Oh, this is fun, y'all. Ain't it fun? Who would ever think? What, did you ever think that one day the most exciting thing to you would be to gather with saints and go read the Bible together? You asked me that 22 years ago, I would have laughed at you with a blunt in my mouth. Thank God for salvation, amen? amen? Real talk. I'm not ashamed of my testimony because it just shows you how powerful his blood is. That's right, he got these stains out. Sometimes he got to throw me in the wash, can I get an amen? Because every day is a battle, right? Okay, Exodus 33. Verse 20, and he said, can thou, thou can not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord spoke unto Moses face to, there you go, face to face. So Moses spoke to God face to face. So yes or no, does God Almighty have a face? Yes. Oh, this is exciting. Does he have a mouth? Yes. I, yeah. Yeah. Now, just as a fun fact, prophets are also called a mouthpiece for God. Did you know that? Let's go. Y'all ready? Who's going to get there first? Exodus 15, 26. I figured I'd stay here because we're already there. You know what I'm saying? Verse 26, I'm going to read it. And said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians for I am the Lord that heals what, what verse am I at? 1526 okay I get it I want one that says mouth though because if someone has a voice they have a what? I'm out. Let's go to Psalms 18, just real quick. We need another one. Actually, go to Jeremiah. Go to Jeremiah 9. We got one here. Yeah. 
I believe this one mentions mouth. Verse. There it is. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Go to verse 12. Because a lot of them say voice. It says, Who is the wise man that may understand this? Who is he whom the mouth of the Lord has spoken that he may declare it? So yes or no, does God have a mouth? Yes. Wow. He's starting to look more and more, well, no, we're starting to look more and more like him every time we read something now, ain't we? This is amazing. How many of y'all know that God has lips and a tongue? Not just a mouth, he got lips and a tongue. Go to Isaiah. Chapter 30. All right, here we go. Verse 27. Look at what it says. Isaiah 30. Oh. Good. He just said in, in Matthew, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Very good catch. Amen. Are y'all ready? Twenty-seven. Behold, the name of the Lord comes from far, burning with an anger, and the burden thereof is heavy. His lips are full of indignation and his tongue is a devouring fire. Right there, he describes the lips and the tongue. Yes or no? Yes. All right. Does he have eyes? Oh, this is so good. Proverbs 15.3. Oh, I, I was one page off. Wow. The eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil and the what? the good and then I want you to write Psalms 11 verse 4 it even says he got eyelids <laughs> this is amazing does he have a nose well I mean how many times you read in the Old Testament when God would want them to make a burnt offering and it says what look I'm not trying to I don't want to mess with God in that way, but I want to say, I believe the Lord loves cookouts. He loved the smell of meat on a grill. Can I get an amen? amen? Is that not what it is? They burnt the offering and it smelled good to the Lord. Fellas, we were truly made in the image of God now, weren't we? You get a grill fire and some steaks, the whole neighborhood, a bunch of men just so what's going on over here. <laughs> I'm just cooking some steaks and uh, I got some A1 at the house if you got an extra steak for me. You ever drive by a Brazilian steakhouse, you can smell that joint a mile later. It goes into your car. Delicious smell, ain't it? Mmm. So God got a nose, can I get an amen? Exodus 15, 8. I'm just going to read it real quick. There might be some people in the room that still got to test the spirit. So let me go ahead and give the verse. Exodus, <laughs> Exodus 15, 8. And with the blast of thy nostrils, the waters were gathered together. The flood stood upright as a heap. And the depths were congealed in the heart of the sea. So God has a nose, yes? I mean, yes. Does God have ears? This is amazing. I mean, what's wrong with all these scholars, sister? Like, what were they reading? Psalms 34. Come on. You come to a conference here, you go through at minimum 200 verses, and that's good. 
It don't seem like it as you're doing it, right? Well, unless there's no time then. Psalms 34, 15, I'm just going to read it real quick. But in my adver adversity, they rejoiced and gathered themselves together. Yeah, the, uh, the abjects gathered themselves together against me, and I knew it not. What, what am I doing? You see, you no, know, God allowed that to happen because some of y'all need to put the rocks, the stones down. <laughs> put them down. Like I thought you were a man of God. <laughs> Dudes in Leviticus. <laughs> Psalms 34. Sorry, I was on 35. I apologize. You know, don't, don't stone me. It says, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. I love the fact it mentions two body parts of the Lord. I could have just did that at the same time. I just thinking, I wonder if there's a verse, like the arm of the Lord, the eye of the Lord, the ear of the Lord. I'll just close, case closed, let's go baptize. Right? That'd be cool, wouldn't it? You better cut it out. Who said that? I know that voice. What up, local soldier? Hey, <laughs> you did too? Yeah. Oh, see this brother always trying to be a forerunner. He's already over to the legs. <laughs> Slow down, brother. Keep your feet. <laughs> Does now hold on a minute. Does God have hair? Some of y'all like you the Lord don't be having no hair. <laughs> Ladies, I bet you he got good hair. Come on now. The Lord got good hair. People be like trying to sell me stuff when I'm walking in like, yo, bro, you need some oil for that beard. I'm like, what's that supposed to mean? <laughs> I'm not an oil beard kind of brother. Look, clean it in the shower, a little bit of shampoo. That's all he gets. <laughs> that's it. Comb it, tuck it in. Daniel chapter 7. Come on now, let's move with it. Y'all getting nice with it. I can't lie though. Y'all getting quick with these pages. Come on now. Daniel 7. Are y'all there? Because I am. That's what I want to hear. Verse 9, look at what it says. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his what? Head like pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. So God has hair like wool. Okay, some of y'all got hair like wool. Okay, I don't, I don't, I barely, I don't got no hair. I don't know. I might have had hair like wool, but I won't be able to find that out till heaven. Yeah, brother. Is that why, uh, well, we, I don't know exactly what hair color Jesus would have had on earth, but in Revelation, he had hair that was white. white. That's yeah. right. Is that to be like the father more? He's bubbling. He's the image of the... See, you getting ahead too. Yes. Represent wisdom. That's right. And Jesus is the wisdom of God. Come on. That's a good one. Does he have hands and arms? Can we skip this one? I don't... We all know we got hands and arms, right? But some of y'all like, well, he, does he have feet and legs though? Does he got toenails? Does the Lord have toenails? Go to Naum 1. We're going to be quick with it. Yes or no? Are we starting to look more like God than we thought? Y'all having fun? I told you. Be careful with Naum. You will go right by him. All right, I'm going to read it. 1 verse 3. The Lord is slow to anger and great, great in power. And will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord had his way in the whirlwind and in the storm and in the clouds are the dust of his feet. You see that? So the scriptures about feet, legs, but we're just going to leave it at that. Is that cool? We already confirmed that he got a back. Moses seen his back, right? Yes or no? This is amazing. So hold on a minute, like, chill, y'all. Like, do we get it already? Did Jesus not say he cast out devils by the finger of God? 
Oh, that's so good. Wow. Y'all ready for it though? Ezekiel chapter 1. Come on. Ezekiel chapter 1. You guys are going to love this, man. Ezekiel chapter 1, verses 25. Y'all ready for it? Come on now. Where's Ezekiel at? It's in the Bible, brother. Come on. Get <laughs> Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 25. And there was a voice from the firmament of that... I always mess that word. <laughs> oh, Lord, help me with this word. And there was a voice from the firmament that was over their heads. Okay, so where was the voice? Above them. The Most High, right? Okay, wait, hold on. Okay. When they stood and had let down their wings. Are y'all ready for it? And above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne. As the appearance of sapphire stone, and upon the likeness of the throne, was the likeness as the appearance of a I, The appearance of what? Amen. Of a man. So, I'm really grateful that a lot of these so-called scholars were like, well, the, we weren't made in the image of God because God is spirit. But how many of y'all know they messed up? Sister, they messed up. Say it with me. Say they messed up. They Say messed it into the mic, girl. Just they messed up. They messed up. <laughs> you want to know why? Y'all want to know why? Because if what they're saying is true, and we clearly were made in the image of God, and God clearly got all, he, we look like him. I'm starting to think of Jesus now. So we were made in the image of Jesus Christ then because if you're not going to agree that we were not made in the image of the invisible God, you can't deny then that it's talking about the Son of God. Are y'all seeing it? And that means that everywhere you're reading these verses in the Old Testament, it was actually Jesus Christ then. Either that or you're going to have to humble yourself and say you were incorrect. But either way, it's victory because we know Jesus Christ is God. Amen. But wait a minute. God got some extra stuff. Now, we ain't going to get into it, but God got wings too, though. Let me check some, brother. Okay, no wings. I'm just... God got wings. God also has fire in him. He's a consuming fire. So obviously there's much more to God. And I was also meditating that could it be that I got to be careful with this. I really do. I got I to gotta be careful with this. But I'm just going to say it. Okay. This is, this is not. I'm not declaring this yet. Even though I believe there's a reason why I'm doing it. But I'm going to say that I believe that. Okay. How do I say this? It's my meditation. It's something that I'm just thinking about. But I got to bring it to the Lord before I can preach it to you as fact. Is that fair enough? What if man was made in the image of God, but not in every part of God? What if angels were also made in certain images of God? Because angels have wings. They could transform into... Okay, <laughs> see, I didn't want to do it. I'll just leave it alone, I guess. <laughs> Say it again. Manifest, that's right, sons of God. And then we became manifested sons of God. Amen. One second, guys. Just please, okay, I love you guys. You guys are on fire. There's no, I love it. But so what I wanted to get into was about Jesus Christ. I wanted to talk about how the Bible says he is the image of the invisible God. Does it not say that? But 
Yeah, we're going to have to wait on that just because I'd rather get to the, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so now that we talked about the outward appearance of God, but have y'all ever considered something? If, if, if the scripture is saying no man has seen God at any time, who were they seeing this whole time? All through the scriptures, we didn't even go through how many times they, uh, certain men seen God face to face. Seen the back of God. I mean, it's pretty clear that men have seen God. But have you ever considered John the Baptist? Why is it so many people could read the scripture where it says when, when Jesus Christ was being baptized, and isn't that exciting? About 500 of y'all plan to get baptized tonight. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Psyching myself up for that, brother. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like 50 growing leaders to keep it moving. <laughs> Remember, though, that the Bible said that he beheld the Holy Spirit descending from heaven like a dove. Uh-uh-uh. You should have said, uh-uh, you're leaving out something. In a bodily sense. How do people miss that? Sister, let me ask you a question. How do you know it's a bodily shape if you can't see it? If, it's if God is utterly invisible, good to see you by the way. If God is utterly invisible, the Holy Ghost is utterly invisible and we can't see him. How did John see what he looked like? That lets you know that God can activate your eyesight. He can choose which dimension. Ah. He can choose which dimension you can look into. Just like he can shut your ears off and open up someone else's ears. When he came to visit Paul the Apostle, when he was Saul... The men around them didn't what? But he did. God could tell fire not to burn. He could tell water not to be wet. Oh, I, I'm done, y'all. You can't put a box on this almighty creator that we serve. But check this out. But what is something else we could discern as far as being created in the image of God. Not just the look, but the character, personality. Are y'all seeing how deep it gets? We gonna have fun with this, but like I said, I can only give one verse for each one. Can we make a deal that we're not gonna go to, mm, that's, I feel like we're robbing. That's not fair, y'all. Cause I wanna read at least one verse, but it takes a long time. So you got to make a commitment and you're going to read it when you get home. Amen? Amen? How many of you know that God has desires? God desires things. Isn't that amazing? He desires for you to be saved. But because he's so powerful, he gave you free will. So he's not going to give you free will and then rob you of your free will and be like, no, you must be saved. How many of y'all know that? Oh, I didn't give you a scripture. Sorry. 1 Timothy 2.4. How many of y'all know that God gets jealous? What? Exodus 20 verse 5. God gets jealous. This ain't like immature jealous like your crazy ex-boyfriend in the world. Who stalked your job. But there is a godly jealousy. Because check it out. God is faithful to his bride. Yes or no? Should not his bride be faithful to him? There's some of you in here. You, you, you were cheated on. Now in the world you weren't married. So it was really irrelevant. Them tears you let off to God. He was like you're wasting your time girl. That was just a fornicating partner. Get over it. But there are some of you in here, you might have had a spouse that cheated on you. Or you cheated on a spouse. That's another level. And the blood of the Lamb can wash you, amen? And more than likely has if you was in the prayers and every day. But God expects his wife to be faithful to him. And it grieves. There's another one. God can be jealous. How many of you know that God gets angry? According to some people online, God is always smiling. But they also put wigs and makeup on, so I don't know what's going on. But God gets angry. 
And if we're made in his image, see, you know what's funny? And I wrote this down because it's, it's hilarious. That's why people who judge you for being too in your feelings don't really know God. I'm not talking about uncontrollable emotions. There are some people, they, they have a demon in their emotional realm. Where they're always emotional in a demonic way. But I've realized in the Christian community, they have demonized emotions. It's weird. They're like, you're in the soulish realm. Why are you having emotions? Uh, I'm, I'm made in the image of God. Like, I get angry sometimes. I, I, I grieve sometimes. I laugh sometimes. But don't you know that what that produces is something... Oh, this is so good. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I, this is like deliverance too. When people try to do that in the religious arena, and they say, look at him, he's angry. <laughs> That's not of God. Look at him, he's all emotional. But what these religious Pharisees have learned to do is suppress their emotions to the point where they become creepy. Have you ever met someone that don't have emotions like that? Now there's some people, they, they have issues, they need deliverance. But I'm talking about somebody who, they hide everything. They're angry on the inside, but like, no, that's fine. No, he smacked me in the face, but I'm all right. <laughs> oh, you cheated on me today, honey? <laughs> What's for dinner? That's the guy that kills the whole neighborhood. And I'm not being funny, like that's real. Because he bottles all that in and puts on a fake outward appearance. You don't want to be like that as a child of God. Ask the Holy Ghost to control your emotions. That's the key. But you have a right to be angry when it's lawful. Did not Jesus Christ flip over the table? Right? Think about that logically. So God gets angry. God gets jealousy as desires. So God gave us emotions, but we can't be caught up in the soulish realm. The Bible calls it what? Devilish. But how many of y'all know that God is a fighter? <laughs> you see what I'm saying, brother? We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. I'm a man of war, I will not fear the dark, I will stand and fight, because my God is light. I'm a man of war, look into my eyes, can't you see Jesus Christ, who died for now's alive? I'm a man of war. Tired of hearing Christians say they'll ride for the Lord. The question is, do you really show him? Everybody say that Jesus is a God of love and peace, but he's also a God of war. Do you really know him? Ah, I'll tell you about the story of David. When he was near the war, heard Goliath mocking the king. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine defying God? Where is Saul? Let me talk to the king. Saul said, David, everybody's afraid to fight the giant. He said, man, give me a rock and a sling. See, my power ain't in my arms or in my mind. It comes from God. Give me the green light, watch what I bring When I used to watch sheep taking care of the land The Lord delivered the lion and bear in my hand That's when Saul looked at David in amazement Baffled, there wasn't nothing that was scaring this man I will not fear the dark I will stand and fight Because my God is light I'm a man Some of y'all got that grandmother, she 80. Grandma, they outside trying to jump me. She get up this hoe, baby girl, Who? Where they at? Grandma ready to swing on somebody. Now that's violence, that's not good. But the point I'm trying to prove is that God is a fighter. He will fight for you. And he won't hesitate either. God will run into battle real quick on behalf of his people. He's a fighter. So ladies, be careful you don't castrate your man. Oh, no, no, no. Don't tell me you got to go to the bathroom. 
Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't tell me you're cramping. It's that. No, you sit down. You need to hear this. Don't castrate your husband. When you suppress him every time he's a man in the house, every time he roars, you want to remove his voice box, you're going to turn him into a eunuch, an Ahab. And guess what, ladies? When you turn your, not you, I reject that in Jesus' name. When a woman turns her man into Ahab, it opens up the door for Jezebel to come into her. Hmm? Now, man, I'm not saying, you know, you come home and you're like, the meatloaf was wet! What's going on in here? No, once again, you walk in the spirit, but if you feel that boldness in you, you got to let your man roar. Because this is that warlike spirit that God the Father has put in him. And if you make him suppress that every time that war, like, even if he's off a little bit, instead of you telling him that's not godly because you think you know God and you need to go know God more, because we're finding out what? God is warlike. And he's bold. The Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion, and Jesus is a lion of all lions. So he's bold. So if every time your man goes to express authority and boldness even if he's a little bit in the flesh sometimes let him get away with it let him exercise his authority in the home and you'll be amazed what it'll do to your marriage but men don't take advantage of it because your wives shout out to my wife they're very special creatures they're not like us they've got chest on their hair and smell like us and right they're made differently they come from the rib there's another bone mystery so y'all thought it was a game that's why the bible says be kind to your wives but ladies if your husband is too kind go in the closet and pray for him because something's wrong because jesus ain't always kind he's kind even in the midst of his his anger or boldness but he's bold sometimes. So if you're trying to shape and mold your husband on what you think is a proper man, you're probably describing a woman. There's a pastor who said that. He said, I asked a woman one time, what do you think is a perfect ideal husband? She described another woman. <laughs> is that not true? Women have been trained, not all y'all, I'm saying some women. Just like I'm not talking about all men. We're fair in this ministry, we're balanced. Would you agree? Amen. Amen. The women who do that though, what they're doing is they're removing the roar from their man. You see? So men, be kind. Wives, submit to your husband. And husbands, the more you're kind to your wife, the easier it is for your wife to submit to you. Isn't that beautiful? But husbands, don't be pretend kind people. Because women can tell. They're not dumb. they be like, what do you want? What is all this about? You clean the house? You cook dinner? The children have a bath? You, there's something you want. I'm getting to the bottom of this. Right? But if you practice kindness with a little mixture of authority, it's a perfect mix. But the point I'm trying to say is you can't be an emotionalist person. It's, it's creepy. Right? Okay, listen, we got to fast forward now. It took the time to explain that. Thank you, brother. Just seen it too. Check it out. God gets grieved. Write that down. Grieved, right? Oh. It honestly, it's all... Okay, I got you. Probably not even going to use a computer, but... We don't have time. God gets grieved. Write that down. Genesis 6, 6 is just one example. We got to speed up now. God laughs. That's amazing. Write Psalms 2, 4. Can you imagine God laughs? That's awesome. But do you know God also mocks his enemies? 
Now keep it real, some of y'all might look at that and be like, he's not godly. Well, it depends on what type of mock you do. He didn't say, there's a level to it. We can't pass. We all learn and develop. And we learn his ways more, right? There's a way to do something, there's a way not to do something. Just like the Bible says, be angry but sin not. See, there's a way to be angry and a way not to be angry. Y'all following? God can become joyful. Isn't that amazing? How many of y'all know that God will hide himself? If you grieve him and you're not showing him, the, he'll literally hide himself. How many of y'all have ever read a Psalms where David says, Lord, how long will you hide your face from me? Right, brother? God will hide himself. Isn't that not something us human beings do? Do we grieve? Do we get angry? Do we feel like a fighter sometimes? Do we laugh? Do we get joyful? Do we withdraw ourselves from people that hurt us sometimes and we want to be alone? Oh, doesn't that make you kind of low-key? That'll put tears in your eyes. When you think of how awesome God is, the main reason for this message was so you know him as a personal God. He's a person. Oh, that's so good. Lord, I feel you, Lord. How many of y'all know that God repents? I knew I was going to hit y'all with that one. Just what do you mean? <laughs> Show me that in the good book. It's not repent like you think repent. Like, you know, God the Father is just like, I'm sorry for my sins. No, come on. He's pure and holy. Repent can also mean turn away. Right? So it's different. Remember that. Because there'll be people that think they study the word to try to prove to you that you don't serve the real God. But you got to look at the root word. It's not the same type of repentance as when we repent of our sins. God is holy. In him there is no sin. Oh, that's good. God is a critic. He gives his opinion. That's, that's good. Whoa. I just said it. Don't mind me if I trip. I just said it. When God created, he stepped back and was like, yo, that's good. <laughs> God said, yo, that's good. He said, yo, but he took pleasure, he took, uh, what's that word? Pleasure or he was delighted in the creation. So God could see something you're doing for him and actually judge it and be like, hey, she did a good job. Well, my son did a good job. Or, mm -hmm. have you ever messed up a meal one time, brothers, ladies? And your spouse didn't want to hurt your feelings? Look, oh yeah, that's good. No, that's not salt. It's not salty at all. It's a critic. How many of you know that God is forgiving? How many of y'all know that God loves? Are we starting to see there's a bigger connection between us and Christ than you thought? Oh, this is so good. But, yeah, I'm telling you, it's about to go somewhere, though. How many of y'all know that God is protective? Man, are you protective of your children? Are you protective, for y'all single brothers, are you protective of your family members in Christ? Family members, are you protective? Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm a protective man, like, I can't help it. I could have someone talking to me, and if something was going on, and I, I, I want to make sure my wife and children are okay, and you should be like that too, man. Don't be oblivious. You should be a protector. Don't be at the park and have, get distracted by some guy you knew in the street. You, your, your boy's running around, and nah, you're a protector. You see what I'm saying? You, you walk around your house at night, you make sure your family's going to be able to sleep good. You're a protector. But God is a protector. Do we not hide under the shadow of his wings? Does he not cover us? Okay, we're getting somewhere. How many of y'all know that God likes to plan things out? He's a planner. God is a planner. He stops and thinks and plans something out. Does, it not, does the Bible not say, I have plans for thee? <laughs> All right, I'm done. <laughs> he got plans for you. God is righteous. Write that down. 
God has rules and expectations. Write that down. Oh, this is amazing. Write this one down. God actually sings. What? That one hit me. Write down Zephaniah chapter 3. God sings. I'm sorry. I need to buy that album. Could you imagine how beautiful God's singing is? No wonder the angels tremble and drop and just worship. Someone talking to me? Oh. Oh, sorry, sorry. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17. There's other things too, like the angels sing and so on. Okay, two more just because we got we to gotta cut it out for time. God is creative. And he's artistic. Look at how he created things. I mean, is he not so amazingly gifted and talented and just phenomenal? Every day he makes a new beauty in the sky. You ever see colors in the sky and you're just like, wow. Pink and orange and light blue and look at the trees. Look at how you see a grass field with these beautiful yellow flowers. And I mean, but look at his creativity. The same God that created a mosquito. Did he create a mosquito? I'm going to ask him one day in heaven. Like, Lord, did you make mosquitoes? Because I hate them things, man. The Lord rebuked mosquitoes in Jesus' name. But the same God that created a mouse created a whale. Like what? The same God that created the lion created the hyena. That's phenomenal to me. It's mind-blowing. So y'all get the point, right? Brothers and sisters, I hope that you were tremendously blessed by this message that was preached at the last conference we did before we left to go on a missionary trip. Although it was rushed, okay, uh, time got the best of us. There were so many people that showed up to the conference that it took longer to praise and worship, which, which you know we ain't complaining about. And it took much longer to do the deliverance prayer because there were a whole lot of demons that had to come out by the authority of Jesus Christ. But brothers and sisters, the reason why we wanted to upload this message is because so many believers are feeling a disconnect with the Almighty God. And it's important that you know that God is a person. God has a personality. And God has an image. And we just wanted to take you on this amazing journey that when you look in the mirror and you see eyes, also know that your heavenly creator has eyes. When you see your ears, your mouth, your face, well, so doesn't the almighty God who created you. He has arms, hands, he has feet, legs, a heart, a back, hair. Doesn't that draw you closer to him? Don't you feel more personal with him? after watching this message. But brothers and sisters, I plan to do a part two where we go way deeper into this mystery because remember, great is the mystery of godliness. But what I would love to do is at least start you on your own personal journey with the Holy Spirit in regards to this subject. I don't know about you, but these are my favorite Bible studies. These are my favorite revelations that give us a greater understanding and open up new revelations and mysteries about who Jesus Christ truly is. So before this video finishes, I want to leave something with you to meditate on. I want to I want to provoke you. I want to provoke you to go on a journey to go deeper. Remember, brothers and sisters, yes, men can be teachers. Remember one thing, brothers and sisters, always lift up Jesus Christ as your number one teacher because you never know. God might show you something that thousands of men before you never knew. And if all you do is piggyback off of what other men say about the Bible, 
and usually they copy each other, there will be mysteries you never find out about. So always lift up the Holy Spirit as your number one teacher who will lead you and guide you into all truth. So now that I said that, as a teacher in your life led by Jesus Christ, now that we've established that Jesus is your number one teacher, I want to show you something. The Word of God says in the Gospel of John chapter 1, as well as the letter of John chapter 4, that no man has seen God at any time. Now in this particular verse, it's referring to God the Father. But we know that God is a mystery according to Timothy. But we know that according to the scripture, great is the mystery of godliness. That means there are things about the Most High God that man still hasn't figured out to the fullness. After all, he goes from glory to glory. But I want you to meditate on something. The Gospel of John in chapter 4 clearly says that God is spirit, right? And he's invisible according to the Word of God because in Colossians chapter 1, Jesus is called the image of the invisible God. It's also confirmed in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, once again, that he is the image of the invisible God. So you have God revealed who shows us who God invisible is. The Son reveals to us God the Father's image and likeness. I need you to look at this and how amazing this is this revelation truly is. Hebrews chapter 1 says that Jesus Christ is the express image of God the Father's person. Jesus made it very clear that if you've seen me, you have seen the Heavenly Father. So I want you to meditate on this for a moment. Like I said, there will be another message coming down the road by the grace of God, but I always want to encourage every single one of you brothers and sisters to get private time with the Lord. Don't just always only learn from teachers. You have to get alone with God. Yes, it is true that God sends teachers to teach you the Word of God led by the Spirit of God, led by the Holy Spirit of God. You have to get alone with the Lord and meditate and study the scriptures. You never know. You never know. He may reveal some mystery to you that men a thousand years before you have never known. But it takes you walking with Christ. So this is what I want to encourage you to meditate on. And I want to show you a new level of majesty and glory about Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus had mentioned in prayer the glory he had with the Father in the beginning, right? And if God is spirit and Jesus is the image of this invisible mighty God, that means that whenever you read in the Bible, Genesis 17, when God appears to Abram and literally says, I am the almighty God. Genesis 32, when Jacob, terrified, says, I have seen God face to face. That Hebrew word is peteniel, I believe it's called. It's literally Hebrew for face of God. Or Exodus chapter 3, when Moses hides at the face of God. When Moses hides himself from the face of God. And who could forget 1 Samuel chapter 3? It says the Lord appeared again in Shiloh for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh or Shiloh by the word of God. I, I want you to think about that. So the almighty father revealed himself by the word of God. Well, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So he revealed himself by Jesus Christ. 1 Kings chapter 3, here we see again the Lord appears to Solomon. And these are just a few. 
brothers and sisters. These are just a few examples. But my question is, and I want you to meditate on this. If no man, according to, God's, according to the gospel of John chapter 1, in the first letter of John chapter 4, if no man hath seen God the Father, then who were they seeing in all of these scriptures that I presented to you? Who was Abram seeing? Jacob, Moses, Samuel, Solomon, and the list goes on. Who were they actually seeing then? <laughs> Uh, I, I think I, I have a good feeling. I have a good feeling you're starting to see the revelation in a much greater light. I, I, I can't help I, I, as much as now, as much as I want to save this for another message down the road. I am just so excited to tell you about Jesus Christ in a more deeper way. So I want to let you know. That Jesus Christ literally is the image of God the Father. And this is why when you see him, you see the Father. And they are one. All right. I want you to think about this logically. Imagine if you could see your spirit and your soul. Now, if you don't understand by now that you are made of three the Bible clearly says, and I'll put the scriptures on the screen, that you have a body, a soul, and a spirit. But I want you to imagine that you can see your spirit and you can see your soul. What if your spirit, man, what if your flesh is the image of your spirit? <laughs> I didn't want to do it, brothers and sisters, but I just can't help it. What if your spirit man, which is invisible to the eye, right? Or at least that we know. What if your spirit man inside of you is seen by looking at your flesh, which is a representation of the image of your spirit man? Oh, this is phenomenal. But can't you see that Jesus Christ, the word become flesh, he is the image of his heavenly father who is invisible, who is spirit. Are you starting to see this? Okay, let, let's try it again. The devil made a mockery in Hollywood. You know, they came out with movies like I think it was called Hollow Man, where they inject this man. That's interesting. They give him a snake bite and he becomes invisible. But yet if you put a sheet over him, if you splash him with water, all of a sudden that water brings out his image. Hmm? I, I use that analogy because it's very hard to find analogies of something that will reveal something invisible. And if you happen to have an analogy that I couldn't think of today, Write it in the comment section. But I, I wanted to show you an analogy on how Jesus Christ perfectly represents his heavenly father and shows the image of what his father looks like. Not only image, but likeness. So could it be that when we were created, the flesh, soul, and spirit were in perfect unison? But when Satan tricked Eve in return, handed that fruit to Adam and they did what they were and they sinned against the most high God and ate that forbidden fruit, their flesh became an enemy of their spirit. Oh, I got to go, y'all. Wow. Their flesh, the Bible says, is at war with the spirit. In my flesh dwells no good thing, Paul said. Could it be that, I don't want to, Lord help me, this is so strong. Could it be that before they sinned, their flesh was actually a representation of the image of their invisible spirit man? Hey, I'm just asking you to consider this now. Could it be that prior to the flesh changing, you see? 
the flesh, the soul, and the spirit were in perfect unison. They agreed in one, and they were one. And you see, when you look at Jesus Christ, how he became flesh and dwelt among us, you can see that his goal and his mission was to reveal the Father to us, was to bring salvation to us, was to destroy the Adamic nature to the cross. So I want you to think about this. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, when Jesus Christ died on the cross, he literally destroyed the Adamic race. Now, I'm not saying humans are not still being born. I'm saying that he finished what he came to do, which was far more than just fulfilling the law. He died for our sins, but he also started a new race. Instead of Adam being our earthly father, and taking upon his makeup, we now have Jesus as our earthly father and God the Father as our heavenly father. Can't you see how simple it is? That now Jesus Christ is changing us and he's bringing together that body, soul, and spirit. For when he appears, we shall be like him, the Bible says. But we know on this earth, there is tension in the flesh. As we are on this earth, we are a spirit being and a soul. And we are in this human body, this earthly vessel that is warring against us. And we have to keep it in subjection. We have to mortify our members. But you see... I want you to imagine that the same way flesh was given to represent the image of this invisible spirit that we are, because remember, we are spirit beings. Jesus, Yeshua Christ, is the outward appearance of his invisible father. Is that not amazing? So when you read Daniel chapter 7, and you see the throne of the Most High God. When you read Ezekiel chapter 1. And again. This vision. Of the Most High God. In the form of a man. The Bible says. My question is. If no man have seen God at any time. Who were these prophets seeing on the throne? They were seeing Jesus Christ. The image of God the Father. Remember, God Almighty has arms and legs and a face and hair and a mouth and a nose and ears and the list goes on. But Jesus Christ is the express image of the Father. That's why they are one. But I wanted to leave two chapters with you for you to meditate and glorify the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. John chapter 12. It's very interesting because it says in verse 37, but though he had done so many miracles, before them, but though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not him. Notice that the Gospel of John quotes from the holy book of Isaiah, saying, the, prophet might, the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spoke, Lord, who hath believed our report, and to whom had the arm of the Lord been revealed? This is referring to Isaiah chapter 53. And everybody should know, and if they don't know, you need to know, this is a prophecy of Jesus Christ of Nazareth dying for our sins and rising from the dead. Amen. But look what it says, though. Therefore they could not believe because the prophet Isaiah said again, He hath blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart. And be converted, and I should heal them. These things said Isaiah when he saw his glory and spoke of him. Well, 
you have to ask yourself, what chapter now? We just found out that the other verse in John was referring to the book of Isaiah chapter 53. But when did Isaiah see the glory of Jesus Christ? Because clearly it's referring to Jesus Christ. It says his glory. And you know very well that God the Father doesn't share his glory with another, no one else. Well, wait a minute. Even in the Greek Septuagint, it says his glory. Referring to the book of Isaiah. But I want you to know that this is referring to chapter 6 of Isaiah. Will you read it with me? Are you not intrigued in, in utter awe? Are you not are you not amazed whenever you find the deeper revelation of Jesus Christ the Almighty? I want you to take a walk with me. And then we'll leave the rest for another video in the future by God's grace. I want you to see this in Isaiah chapter 6. I want you to see what the Gospel of John chapter 12 is referring to. So that way you can lift up the Messiah higher than you ever had in your life. Remember that he is the Holy One of Israel. Remember there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are the Holy One. Now listen. In the year, uh, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also what the Lord sitting upon a throne. That word there is Adonai. This is God Almighty. This is not some other God, a kind of God, an angel. No, no, no. God doesn't share his throne. Okay, there are many thrones and dominions. This is not that, as y'all know. So let's just establish this right here and right now. This is Adonai. Listen carefully now. The Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up. This word, if you study it, means above all these other thrones, huh? And his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one has six wings and two covered his face. Two he covered his feet and with two he did fly. And the one cried unto the another saying, holy, holy, holy. Imagine there's three holies for a reason, saints. Remember, you are a body, a soul, and a spirit right you have the father son and holy ghost correct now listen is the lord god is the lord of hosts the whole earth is full of his glory did you see it and the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried and the house was filled with smoke can you imagine isaiah was seeing Yeshua the Messiah remember he said before Abraham was I am remember when he prayed in the gospel of John he spoke of the glory that he once had because when you start to understand this mystery and revelation that the Messiah chose to come to the earth and become flesh and he had to walk the earth as a servant Humble even to the death of the cross, the Bible says. And this is why he gives all the glory to the Father. But see, foolish Galatians, foolish men and women think because he was being perfectly humble that he is some other God and not the Most High God, that he is not the Almighty God. But they know not God. These are scoffers the Bible warns us about. But my question, and I'm going to reiterate it before we go. All these times that God appeared to many in the Bible, in the Old Testament, moving forward, Abram, Jacob, Moses, Samuel, Solomon, and the list goes on. If no man hath seen God the Father, but yet they seen God, not a God, not some kind of God, but they seen the almighty God. What this means, brothers and sisters, is they were seeing Jesus Christ because he is the image of the invisible God. Imagine that. 
I gotta go, y'all. This is amazing. I hope this blessed you. I hope it stirred you up to go on an amazing journey to get to know your heavenly creator greater than you did. Remember, he has feelings, not emotions like in the flesh, but God has feelings. He can be grieved. He can be angry and jealous. You remember from the message, from the conference we did right before we went on our mission trip. And we wanted to upload this so you can be drawn closer to him and have a more personal relationship with the Lord God Almighty. And you look in the mirror, you say, wow, I look like God. Jesus Christ is the image of God the Father. Wow. And don't forget, I truly believe that this earthly vessel was first created before the fall of Adam and Eve. It was in perfect unity with the soul and spirit. And the outward flesh was the image of what Adam's spirit man looked like. Just as Jesus Christ is the outward image of what God the Father looks like. But you see, the difference is Jesus Christ is not a fallen man. Jesus Christ saved the fallen man. He took upon the flesh so that way he could bring it to the cross and rise from the dead and give us an opportunity to now be in his likeness and image instead of Adam. So that way we, you know what? I gotta go, y'all. <laughs> in Jesus Christ's name, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this amazing word. We thank you for the message. We are so encouraged and we wanna get to know you greater, Father. I hope you're praying this with me. Father God, we know from the scriptures that you have eyes and ears and nose and nostrils and a mouth and lips and tongue. You have hair, you have breath, you have a back, you have a heart, you have legs and arms, hands and feet. When we look in the mirror, we have those same body parts. And yet, so-called scholars will try to mock this and scoff at this as some kind of symbolism that you don't really have ears. You don't really have eyes. Maybe they are just not close to you. Father, That I pray that those people that claim to know the word, that doubt what we're saying, that you will visit them that are able to be saved and they can get to know you more personal. Because Lord, now when I think of you, I'm closer to you knowing this revelation that you do have feelings, that you can be grieved, God forbid. You can be provoked to anger, jealousy, God forbid. You can also rejoice, hallelujah. You also love, for you are love itself. You are creative. And when you have given us free will to be creative, it's because we're made in your image and likeness. We have arms and legs and eyes and ears and a mouth because we're made in the image of God. And Jesus Christ, we give you all the glory because when Adam fell, you have redeemed us by finishing it on the cross. And when you rose from the dead on the third day, you have allowed us to become new creatures. We used to look at Adam as our earthly father, for all came from his loins, making him our earthly father, even though we have a heavenly father. No different, oh, therefore I declare that Jesus, you are now our earthly father, and we come from your spiritual loins, and we have a God the Father. We love you so much, Lord Jesus Christ, and we thank you for this revelation. We thank you that these mighty soldiers in the Bible witnessed you as the image of God the Father. For you are the Most High. You are the Almighty. You are Adonai, high and lifted up. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Brothers and sisters, we love y'all so much. 
I would love to go on. I'm going to wait. We got other videos we got to get done. In this video, there'll be a part two. I don't know what the name of it will be, but we're going to revisit this because as you know, there were so many precious brothers and sisters that showed up to that last conference in Atlanta. Time got the best of us. <laughs> so we had to rush this message, but everything happens for a reason. So we love y'all so much. We thank you for standing by our side in Christ in this last hour. We thank you for being faithful to the Lord God Almighty. Because if you're faithful to him, you'll be faithful to his servants. Bless.